What do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Sophisticated. Okay, I know, I know, it's bad. Don't forget to comment below, subscribe, let me know um, your favorite jokes, let me know what comments and um, topics you'd like me to talk about that relates to cricket and your kids. Without further ado, let's get it. So, Quinton de Kock has decided to retire from international cricket. Does that even matter? Let's get into it. Every now and again, we find a special talent that everybody agrees needs to be looked after. And Quinton was one of those. Some others you may know. While going to school in Cairns in Johannesburg, Quinton was identified as a talent. That was solidified when we turned on the burners at the Under-19 Cricket World Cup in 2012. He scored 95 against Bangladesh, 126 against Namibia, and still took two stumpings and three catches in that same game, eventually ranking fourth overall. The wonders of performing at the Under-19 Cricket World Cup. Mind you, he had already joined the Lions at only 16. From there, Quinton achieved many milestones like being the fastest South African to score a T20 half century in just 17 balls and being the fastest South African to reach a thousand runs in ODI cricket. So by all measures, we weren't wrong about the man. He is a talent. Where the confusion comes in is when a 29 year old man decides to retire from international test cricket in his most fruitful years as an international cricketer. This has raised a lot of debate around what it means to play for the Proteas. Is there really still Protea fire? Oh, South Africa. To the team! Oh, yeah! To the team! Oh, yeah! To the team! Oh, yeah! Are the politics overshadowing the game? Has the emergence of the more lucrative T20 tournaments around the world forced players to set aside Test Match Cricket and rather play the short format? I mean, we've seen players retire from international cricket and still continue to ply their trade around the world in any tournament that will pay them. Okay, to be clear, Quinton's reason for retiring from international test cricket was to spend time with his family. And kudos to him for that. We need more present fathers in this world. Whether he's actually going to do that and can say no to all the money that's going to be thrown at him, that remains to be seen. But for now, Go ahead and do your daddy thing, Quinny. The real question is, how should we be looking at this as the general public? I've already explained in my last video how many kids go to the under-19 cricket week in December. Now, if you haven't seen that video, where have you been, bro? Now, Cricket South Africa has recently moved our domestic system from a franchise system Meaning we go from around six franchises with around 17 players in circulation to the provincial system, meaning we go to around 15 teams with around 280 players in circulation. The politics around this are not really what I'm interested in. It's the flow of players in and out the system that really get my juices going. With the 208 kids that went to the under-19 cricket week in 2021, most of them want to pursue cricket as a career, but we all know that's not going to happen. However, what we don't want to do is lose our top talent to the general job market purely because there's no opportunity for them to prove themselves. What you end up with is an air of arrogance of players thinking they can sign away their right to play for their country and then just slot back in once they've cashed the checks. Some of the players that have taken Colpac contracts you may know. And you know what? They're right. When you know that you're part of the chosen few and you've got your country by the balls because you know there are only 75 players in rotation, why not? Now, back to the pro tiers. Playing for your country should be a massive privilege, regardless of the domestic system we have. And if you feel like you can't give 100% to your country, you should be allowed to hang up your boots and go spend time with your family. Because somewhere in a change room in South Africa, there's a young talent waiting to get the call to the international stage. I was on my way to practice, and yeah, I got a call from Mr. Hudson. 
giving me the news. So I remember I kept on saying, thank you, say, okay, sir. And I sounded like a schoolboy. But yeah, I was lost for words. When you consider that there are about 21 players in the Proteus squad for a single format, of which, in a three-match test series, maybe one or two of those players outside of the starting 11 would get an opportunity to play. Also considering that most of those players play across all three formats. In my view, a player's decision to retire from international cricket, for whatever reason, should be welcomed with open arms. Yes, we're losing experience and possibly a talent, but the days of players owning positions in the national team need to come to an end. We come from an era where players have been accused of threatening to not play if certain players get an opportunity to play for their country. Now I've known privilege before, but the kind of privilege to think you can make that kind of ultimatum on a national level is beyond me. Because forget about how much you love the player accused of this. And think about how you would feel if the player being kicked out of the squad was your kid. The kid you've watched sacrifice their weekends, after schools, study late at night because they had games the whole weekend, miss family functions and gatherings, needing to tell the whole family and your friends that all of this will be worth it when he's wearing the green and gold. Then come to find out that you were right. He was good enough. He did have it in him. They did pick up the phone. They did dial his number to make the call. But another player's comforts were chosen over you and your son's dreams. Motivating to have a player stay on because we'll fall apart if we lose him is only something you do at club level, not national. Playing for your national team is not just about talent. It's about drive, it's about power, we stay hungry, we devour, put in the work. <laughs> On a serious note, it's about the passion of representing every South African that's sitting at home at the edge of their seats as you take the field. It's about having the fire in your belly to know that you're going to need everything on that field. And knowing that every player sitting at home watching you right now would give everything to be in your position. Our national team doesn't need mercenaries who prioritize tournament checks over national pride. We need patriots who will give it all for the green and gold. Because that's exactly what it means to be at the very top of the ladder. Because maybe one day we can, at a national level, experience a moment like this. Straight down the ground, Bradley Dial punches it, back past the ball over the top, and Aidan Markram leaps in the air, and here come the celebrations from his teammates.